Hey guys, welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at dependency injection in iOS. Of course, we're going to be working in Swift as always. And first we're going to actually look uh, at what it is in a playground, talk about a couple examples, then we're going to actually do a real world example in a real project. So with that being said, make sure you smash that like button below for the YouTube algorithm and let's get into Xcode. So as always, let's open up Xcode and let's get started with the playground. Let's keep it as a blank playground and we'll just call it injection. And I'll give this a second to load. And once it's loaded, we'll start talking about what dependency injection is. Cool. Let's move this up here and let's zoom in. So dependency injection is not a concept that is specific to iOS. It's the notion of defining contracts for objects and classes and using those contracts to inject multiple types of objects or multiple objects that inherit that contract. So what the heck does that mean? So a contract in iOS and particularly in Swift is oftentimes referred to uh, as a protocol. So a protocol might be um, something that represents, let's say, driving. Something that can drive is also going to be able to have functions in it that, let's say, are uh, start driving, is driving, and let's say stop driving. So we have this protocol defined that has three functions in it. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use this protocol to model dependency injection. So let's say we have two classes. One is called BMW and the other is called, I don't know, Honda. And let's say we're working in a project where the user is selecting what type of car they want, whether it's a game or whatever the project is. Let's say they're in a class and this class is um, selected car. And in here, we are gonna basically have an initializer and we're gonna take in a car as a parameter. So the problem is, we can specify this BMW as the parameter type, and we can say that there's a property in here called car, and its type is BMW. We can do self.car equals car. But what if the person picked the Honda? Okay, well, we can come in here and change this to Honda. That works, but now we can't pass in BMW. So what this mechanism of dependency injection allows us to do is to define contracts that can be used by any class that in, in, inherits or conforms to that contract. So let me, let me show an example because it's a little, it's a bit of a mouthful to explain. So instead of the parameter of car being a BMW or Honda, it's going to be anything that is capable of driving. Same here, this is going to be anything that's capable of driving. Now, what we can actually do is come down here and we can say let selection equals the selected car. And in here, we can not only pass a BMW, we can actually do the same thing with the Honda. And as you can imagine, as we get more and more classes, and this is complaining because, ah, something important I forgot to do. The reason this is complaining is we need to actually have these two classes conform to this protocol. And this will throw some errors up here because we need to include these functions in each of these classes. So let's hit that and hit fix. This we can delete, we can return true in here. Also delete this, this, return true, and delete this. 
So now if you come down here, you see the error has gone away because both Honda and BMW, both of these classes, implement the driving protocol or contract as it's also called. So as you can imagine, as we add a bunch of other classes that need to be uh, need to have the ability to be picked by the user, they can all conform to driving and we don't have to change this in here. So that's basically a very quick run through of dependency injection. So let's actually close up this playground and open up Xcode again and create a project to show why this would be useful in a real world scenario. So let's create a single view application. Let's call this email and let's save it on our desktop. And let's hit Command R to build and run this. Make sure you pick a simulator. And let's hit Run. And what we're going to do is, once this decides to build, we're going to basically create an app which uh, allows us to show different types of email accounts. So Gmail, Yahoo, uh, what else is there? Outlook, etc. So we're going to go to our view controller and we're going to set up a basic table view. If you're not familiar with setting up a table view, I have a separate video on that. So take a look at that. I want to focus this video on the injection itself. So I'm not going to be diving into that much, but basically we're going to set up a basic table view and we are going to create a function which is going to show a list of different email accounts. Uh, what else do we need? Number of rows. Let's just do zero for now. Cell for row. Uh, let's see. Is that what we want? Table view. That's not what we want. Table view. Cell for row. This is what we want. Sometimes Xcode decides to be extra difficult. And by sometimes, I mean all the time. So we're going to say let cell equals table view DQ cell with identifier index path. We're just going to say cell in here. Do that. And we're going to return the cell. Don't forget to head to your storyboard, drag on the table, and set the outlet and identifier. So let's come up here, find a quick table, drag it on, make sure you come down here and set some constraints to it, like so, and select it, come over here and bump this prototype cell count. Make sure you also Drop this down, select the cell, and set its ID. We called it cell. And let's talk about dependency injection now. Rather, let's implement the injection. So we're going to create a function which is going to return the models for our um, for the actual things we want to show in the cell. And it's going to return an array of email accounts. And we haven't created this yet, but we're going to come down here and create a protocol for an email account. And if we think about it, an email account has a username, which is a string. And it also has a domain which is a string. And let's say this email account can also have a last email received, which is a date, like so. Now we can create these three, uh, the three email accounts we talked about, so Gmail, Yahoo, and Outlook. Copy and paste that. And we want to have each of them 
conform to this protocol. And you'll see in just a second, this will give us some errors down here because we don't conform and what's going on up here. Let's see, we should spell string correctly, the correct uppercase. So let's hit fix. One more time. And one last time, hit fix. And you'll see that it put in the properties that we put in our protocol up here. And it looks like on this one, for some reason, we're missing the, the domain property. So let's put that here. And what we need to do is, because this is a getter property, we're going to supply a value. So let's say this is John. The domain is gmail.com. And we'll just do the current date for last email received. And let's actually take this and copy and paste it. Makes things a little faster. Like so. And don't forget to update the values. So Outlook. And this one's going to be Yahoo. And uh, lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to create those uh, models and return them. So we're going to say let rather we're just going to do yeah, let's do models gmail yahoo and outlook and let's return this array so notice this array is an array of these other classes and this is complaining because Cannot convert expression of type any to return type email account. So let's see what's going on. So we are creating this models array. Let's just do this. We're returning this array and we shouldn't see an error if I've done things correctly, which we don't. So basically, uh, what, we're, what we've done here is we have this array which has Gmail, Yahoo, and Outlook in it. And each of these, while they're not this exact email account type, each of these conforms to the email account type in their class, uh, which is why we can say this is an array of email accounts. So dependency injection gives us the flexibility to use different objects and classes that all share a common contract. What we're going to do up here is we're going to say flat data equals models. And I actually probably can't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this equals email account. And then we're going to say self.data equals models. I think that's what I called the function. And we're going to change this to a var. So we can assign it and here we're going to return data dot count and here we're going to say cell dot text label dot text equals something but first we're going to say email let account rather is the current positions account so in data we're going to find index path dot row and here, what we can do is we can say account.domain. So where does this domain come from? This domain actually comes from the protocol and not actually from the class itself. While the value will come from the class, the reason that the language lets you access this domain property is because this array data up here is an array of email account objects, whereas email account is actually the interface and these classes conform to the interface. So let's hit Command R and see what we get. We should get a table with Gmail, Yahoo, and Outlook in it. So let's load this up, give it a second, and let's see, we've crashed. The reason we've crashed is because up here, let's see, we did view controller, delegate, data source, Let's see, this isn't correct. Unexpectedly found nil. Ah, because the thing that we forgot to do 
was link up our outlet. So I think I even said, don't forget to do it. And I forgot to do it. So make sure you connect your outlet to your table in the storyboard. Hit command R one more time. And let's see, what did I forget to do now? Let's see, thread signal sig abort. So let's head back to our view controller. Let's get rid of this jazz. And let's also get rid of this. And let's see if we can run without crashing. Let's see, this is complaining because we don't, because we commented out those functions. So let's run this again. And we're not crashing anymore. So let's put this back. Let's put this back. And let's run this and see what happens. Should not be crashing because data is empty as expected. Now let's uncomment this. And let's uncomment this and run this one more time. Still shouldn't crash as expected. And lastly, let's uncomment this guy. And let's see what's going on in here. So we're saying DQ reusable cell with identifier. Uh, let's spell cell correctly, which is our problem most likely. And hit command R one more time. And look at that. We have our three domain names, Gmail, Yahoo, and Outlook as expected. And we were able to create this data array through a protocol and not the actual object type directly. Um, I like to leave these moments where I have like a typo or I forget to do something in the video. Uh, it's a part of development, especially iOS. So if you ever hit any issues like that, don't sweat it, comment stuff out and see what part of your code broke your application. But yeah, that's basically dependency injection in a nutshell. Um, it's used pretty widely across in industry and large projects. It's very useful when you have a bunch of different classes, as you can imagine large projects do. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, smash that like button below. Uh, really helps out the video and the channel a lot. Subscribe if you're new for daily Swift videos, other iOS and tech videos that I do. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.